Hey, thanks for watching. In this video, my good friend Ty Brandeman is back and he's giving some great analogies and just different concepts for understanding electricity and magnetism better. This is a really great opportunity for you to share this video with somebody who maybe struggles with the basic principles of electricity and magnetism, as many newer technicians and apprentices do. I've put a link down in the description to Ty's channel. I would strongly suggest you subscribe to Ty's channel. He has a lot of really great training and education on there. So here we go, Ty Brandeman talking about the basics of magnetism and electricity. What happens if I send a magnet through a coil of wire? What do we end up happening? Uh, no, you create electricity. You create electricity, yes! Essentially, we create electricity. If I have a magnet, and here's a magnet, and I'm sending it through a coil of wire, so if I send a magnet through a coil of wire, we generate electricity. We can see that happening because we have the light, and it's actually storing a little bit. But that's how we generate electricity. And I didn't bring my... Um, other device, but we have two magnets and we send coils of wire turning through that magnetic field and we end up doing what? Electricity. Creating electricity. Now what happens though when I send electricity through a coil of wire? You create a magnet. Create a magnet, yes! So if we send electricity through the coil, we create a magnet. magnet. And if I send a magnet through a coil of wire, I get electricity, electricity a generator. Does that make sense? So this solenoid, if I send 24 volts to this solenoid, what happens? Magnet. Magnet. You're, just, you're assuming now. You're, you're assuming that I'm right, and I'm not always right. Let's plug it in and see. All right, somebody want to press that button? No. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, I was kidding. Go ahead. Yes, what happened? Oh. What happened? It's a magnet. It's a magnet. Now release it. We have an electromagnet, right? This is electricity in its simplest form. That right there is key though. It's so very important, our electromagnet. We know that's an electromagnet, but let's think a little bit more about a motor. What's really cool about a motor is it doesn't just have one electromagnet. Here we have how many different electromagnets? Six, correct. Six, we have six different electromagnets. And what's cool is let's say this one is north and this one's south. Because it's alternating current going and these are in series, we're gonna be moving that electromagnetic field around as we go. And eventually we're gonna get here and they switch. So this one was north, it's now south. This one's south, it's now north. And we're gonna keep rotating that electromagnet around. Now if I put another magnet inside or if I induce a magnetic field inside, what would be happening to my rotor? Would it be turning, following it? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes it would. This is how we have motors. I'm making electromagnets with electricity and then I have my rotor that I'm turning through here and I can make motors work. Inversely, generation's that same way. Let's say I have a wind turbine or water flowing through dams and I'm using my magnet and I'm turning this lever, forcing a magnet through these windings. What's happening? Creating electricity. Creating electricity, I'm generating electricity. So I can use the magnet and force electricity out, or I can force electricity in and make the motor turn. Electricity and magnetism go hand in hand. They are very closely connected. And we talked about magnetic fields earlier. Here you can see the magnetic field on a simple north and south. With alternating current, we're changing directions 60 times a second. We still have this magnetic field on the side. Now we have that clamp meter. When we have this clamp meter, it does many things. I check voltage or ohms using the leads. But what do I use this part for? So amperage. Amperage. I'm checking amperage. But does it touch a wire when I'm checking amperage? No. What is it touching? The magnetic field around the wire. The magnetic field around the wire. That's right. So as amperage flows faster, the magnetic field gets stronger. Has anybody been in a welding shop before? Fantastic. You go to a welding shop, people are grinding, there's all this, uh, well essentially there's this stuff right here all over the floor. Well, what's cool is if you see the leads where they're welding, there's lots of amperage going through there. And it creates a very strong magnetic field and all of this, these shavings in the floor will be perpendicular to the wire. Well this is working the same essential way. As I test and there's electricity going through a wire, it's creating that magnetic field. This right here is reading that magnetic field. It's using some cool math and it's giving you a number, giving you the amperage. Isn't that amazing? I think that's awesome. I can check the speed of electron flow, 
through this wire without actually in touching that wire at all. So if I send electricity through, now how can I increase a magnetic field? You loop the wire around. Yes! Loop the wire around. And guess what we do on these motors? I loop the wire around. It magnifies the electromagnetic field. It makes it stronger. That's what they do in the, the transformers. It, it, it's exactly right. Transformers, also the solenoid we have over there, does the same thing. Here's another solenoid. And what we've done is we've wrapped the wire around and around and around and around and around. And we've increased that magnetic field. The same thing here with another set of wire. We've increased that magnetic field. And we're going to talk about transformers today too. So here's my electromagnets here. Not electromagnet, 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 electromagnet. So this motor, these are called poles. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six pole motor. Now what would turn faster, a six pole motor or an eight pole motor? Eight pole. Everybody agree? Only one person's answering. So if only one person answering, everybody agree with him? No. Oh. No. Oh, not if I, I like that answer, but I don't have to agree with him. I don't like it. You have, yeah. Yes? Goes, oh, now you're changing it. No, no, I said yes. It goes yes. faster, for sure. Everybody agree? That's how you be. Where's that? Uh, let's bring motor. that office chair out here. Let's see what's going to happen. Somebody want to roll that office chair out here? So we're going to test this theory out. We are all going to be involved in what it takes to make a motor work. All right, let's count the poles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got an eight pole motor. So we can't bypass anybody. I'm an electromagnetic field and I'm going to move and you're not an electromagnetic field. Now you move with him, you got to have a full grip on it. And then you pull it to him, pull it to him good. And then you, good. Keep it, try to keep it in the center. You can't bypass Bert. Okay, so this is an eight pole motor. The magnetic field, the next person, you got to have full control. You can't just pass him. Oops, see that slid through? It's going a little bit. Full control, good, full control. Oh, okay. Eight pole motor. So far so good? You're the rotor, we're the stator. We're stationary, he's rotating. So far so good? Yeah. All right, now let's take away two people. So let's have, okay, you, you out, and then you're out because you're across from him. Now everybody else spread back out. Now how many poles do we have now? One, two, three, four. Six. Wait, six. six, good. <laughs> Math. Don't trust me with numbers. <laughs> Here we go. Let's try it again. All right, is it turning faster? This is faster. Oh, oh the, the, the rotor says it's turning faster, but I don't believe the rotor. This is faster. Let's try this a little bit more dramatic. Let's take two people away. All right, let's all separate out. Now let's try this again. Now we got a four pole motor, right? You ready? So I turn it to you. All right. All right, is it turning faster? Yeah. So the fewer number of poles, the faster that motor's gonna turn, but I don't know. Let's take away two more people. It's just you and me, we're a two pole motor now. Let's see how this two pole motor is going to work. You ready? Is it turning faster, sir? No. <laughs> we don't want a few on us, right? So, on a motor, which is going to make that motor turn faster? More poles or fewer poles? Fewer poles. Fewer poles. The fewer number of poles. Pulse stays the same. The fewer number of poles, the faster that it turns. The more number of poles, the slower that it turns as each, each and every one. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So far, so good? So if you actually look inside of motors, you're going to have a start winding and a run winding. You're only going to count one. So if you count the run winding, you can actually count the number of poles. You can do a little bit of scary math stuff, and you actually find out how fast that motor turns. Which would turn faster, my six pole or this two pole? The two pole. Two pole. Now there's some variances. We have some other things to determine, such as uh, frequency, also slip, and voltage is going to be a factor in that as well. But this is going to understand that magnetic field, that magnetic field is moving around. So it doesn't change the speed of the magnetic field to have more poles in it, but it still has to go from top to bottom every time, like just as fast. It has to go to top to bottom of now this pole, now this pole, now this pole, all the way around. Right. So because I have fewer poles, I can go all the way around faster. Yeah. But then you lose power, you have a bigger variation. Oh, uh, power though, that's a great question. Power is going to be dependent on something else. Does anybody know the formula for power? Or just give me another word for power. Let's start there. What's Watts. another word for power? Watts, yes, my buddy Watts, right? Watts is another word for power. I said Watts. So for power, how do we get the formula for Watts? It's uh, volts times, times uh, okay. I don't remember the whole thing. It's voltage time. I'm pretty sure. Yes! Volts times amps equals? Uh, 
Watts. Watts. Volts <laughs> times amps equals watts. Now this is a true form of power. So confident. Volts times amps <laughs> equals watts. So this is really going to go have a factor in our resistance. How much resistance we have? Very low resistance. So we're going to have faster amp flow, which means we're going to be using more watts or more power. So the number of poles doesn't necessarily determine how strong that motor is going to be. It's also going to have to do with the resistance of that. So let's bring this to the next thing we're going to be talking about. Uh, less resistance, faster amperage, more wattage. Big thanks to Ty for doing this and for everything that he brings to our trade. It's always great to collaborate with other people who care about our trade and who want to see it do better. And Ty is definitely one of those people. Again, look down in the description. We have a link to his channel. And I would ask that you subscribe to his channel and that you follow everything that he has going on. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.